Howdy guys, welcome back to BIG Photography. This is Ben and today I want to talk about a tool that is probably not known or used by too many photographers but can really help with making sure that your skin tones are accurate and give you a good starting point before you start doing any kind of creative color grading. And that tool is the vector scope. Now if any of you guys watching do any kind of video editing or especially color grading, you're probably already familiar with this tool, but it's a tool that isn't usually available on photo editing apps, so most photographers might be unfamiliar with it. So it's nice that Affinity Photo actually has one built in. All right, so let's just go ahead and dive right in. So first off, if you do not have this tool in your toolbar in your window, you're gonna have to go to Window and Scope. And you should get a little pop-up like this. Let's go ahead and change this from Intensity Waveform down to Vector Scope and you should get a little circular graph. Now I'm gonna go ahead and just move this up here so it's out of the way. And because this window is kind of small and can't be resized, I went ahead and just recreated it here in an affinity photo just so I could explain it better. So the vector scope is a tool uh, which measures a video signal, or in this case a still image, and it gives you the color and saturation information of that image. Now this tool is mainly used in video to ensure that the signal being output is displaying the correct colors, uh, but for us we can use it to help assess our skin tones. So let me show you how it works. So with this vector scope we have these six little circles around the outer edges, and each one of these represents the six colors used in the RGB uh, system. We have R for red, G for green and B for blue, and then we have magenta, cyan, and yellow. Now we also have this little uh, extra eye and this other little line here called the eye line or the eye bar, and I'll explain what that is in a little bit. So the way this works is, is the vector scope is gonna display color and saturation information that is found in your image. So heavily saturated colors are gonna be displayed kind of around this outer edge here, and low saturated colors are gonna be displayed closer to the center. So how does that work? So let's say for example, I have a white background. And if I were to take a red color and just start painting in some red, uh, I might get something that looks kind of like this. So this tells me that there is this red color present. The red is red, but kind of almost a little bit of magenta in it because we're kind of going out this direction and that the red is kind of halfway saturated. If I were to take full RGB red, the actual red value for RGB, and fully saturate it and paint that color again, I would get a little dot here. Now this tells me that the color I painted is full RGB red and it is fully saturated. If I were to desaturate that color, I might start getting some little points down here. If I were to start pushing that color more toward magenta, I might start getting points around here and if I was start to saturate that color I might start getting points like that so you can see the way it works right let's actually see it in action so you can get a better understanding of it and let's go ahead and look at the actual vector scope so let's go ahead and do what I said let's grab a brush let's grab a red color and let's get it kind of saturated here and I'm just gonna make the brush a bit bigger and I'm just gonna paint and let's see what happens so you can see here on the vector scope, it has painted a little plot here, telling me that I have this red color, and it is a bit pink, so you can kind of see it's kind of a bit between red and magenta, and it's about, it's pretty saturated, but not fully saturated. Now, if I were to choose the actual RGB red and fully saturate it, and let's get luminosity to 50%, and paint again, like I said, now we see that color being represented right in the middle of this R, telling me this is the correct red. If I were to desaturate that and paint some more, you're gonna see it come down here. If I was to start going toward magenta, you're gonna see I'm pretty close to actual magenta, which is 300 degrees. And let's go ahead and fully saturate that. And you can see that, perfect. Okay, great, we know how it works. So how does this help us with our skin tones? Well, if we see, or I talked about this little eye line earlier, what this eye line is actually, it stands for in phase. And if you've ever seen these, which I'm sure you have, these are NTSC color bars. And these color bars are used by video engineers and they could pass this signal through a vector scope to ensure that the colors being output were correct. And as you can see here, we have a dot for red 
yellow, green, cyan, blue, and magenta. We also have some other spots corresponding to some of the other little colors here. Also, Affinity Photo does some kind of weird anti-aliasing, so those colors are being present. If I were to just show you the actual color bars, you would see that only these colors are present. Now going back to our color bars here, uh, we have this I line, which stood for in phase, and I think that corresponded to one of these blue squares down here. Um, this was something for video engineers to understand, but not really for us. For us to understand is that this I line, this I bar, kind of coincidentally falls where most human skin tone falls. So let me go ahead and show you that. So here I've collected a bunch of patches of skin from all my photo shoots, or not all, but a lot of my photo shoots. And I've got black models, white models, Asian, Latino, um, fair skin, light skin, hand, you know, just different shades of skin. I try to get a pretty diverse selection. And as you can see here on the vector scope, most of that skin falls right around this eye line. So nowadays you're going to hear a lot of people refer to this as the skin tone line and um, which is fine because that's what it is, but it was never initially designed as a skin tone line. It was just kind of out of coincidence that that's where most human skin tone falls. And now people just refer to it as the skin tone line. Uh, I sometimes say skin tone line. I might sometimes say eye line, both the same thing. So knowing this information, we can use this to help adjust our skin tones to push them a bit closer toward that eye line, just so we know our skin tones are looking a bit more accurate. Let me show you some examples. So here I have a shot of some models I did a while back, and you can see in this image, there's only really one color present, which is their skin tone and their lipstick. We can see that represented here right on this eye line. We can see this other little cloud right around here, which is definitely gonna be their lipstick. And we can see there's a little bit of like cyan blue, and that's probably gonna be some of the highlights here on the hair. And maybe I pushed in some uh, cyan in the shadows. So how can we fix skin tones using this information? So let's go and look at another shot. Now this is a test shot that I did of a friend, and I purposely messed up the white balance for this example. So here we can already see the white balance is incorrect. So first we need to fix that. I have a white balance adjustment uh, layer here. I'm gonna go ahead and click that on. And even with the white balance corrected, it definitely helped a lot, but her skin tone still looks a little bit off. Now, one way to really help uh, assess the skin tone using the vector scope is just to isolate the skin tone. An easy way to do that is just go ahead and crop into a section of skin. Uh, here, I'm gonna go ahead and pick her shoulder. Uh, I don't like to do it from the face. You know, for example, if we were to do this, it's gonna pick up some of the red in her lips, maybe some of the eye color. Uh, she's not really wearing makeup here, but if we had blush or mascara, you know, stuff like that, it would affect the way the vector scope shows our colors. So I like to pick a very neutral area, which might be the shoulder, uh, arm, even the forehead is fine. Just go ahead and grab this little area of the arm here, click on that. And we can see just by looking at the vector scope that this skin patch is kind of pushed a bit more toward yellow, and I'd like to get it more pushed toward that eye line. So let's go ahead and do that. So what I wanna do is do that with an HSL adjustment layer. And I want to isolate and pick her skin. Now what I like to do, I wanna make sure that whatever adjustments I make in this adjustment layer uh, is only affecting her skin. So by desaturating everything, I can see what this adjustment's affecting. And we can see that it actually desaturated the green. So I need to basically narrow down my selection by taking some of that green out so that it's just affecting her skin. I'm gonna do the same thing with the red, see if I can bring her lip color back in. Maybe just something like that. I think that's pretty good. Uh, I'm gonna, actually, I can see a little bit of color coming back in her neck, so I'm gonna pull this back a little bit. Okay, so now I know that any adjustments I make are only going to affect her skin tone. Perfect. Okay, so that looks good. All right, so now that that's done, let's go ahead and go over to our crop tool here. And let's recrop here. This time, let's do our shoulder. And again, we can see that it's very pushed toward the yellow, and I wanna get it closer to that skin tone line. So using the hue shift slider, I'm gonna just start slowly shifting it to the right. Maybe something about like that. Okay, we'll start there. Now you can't see it here, but you'll notice it when I unclip the canvas, that when we hue shift, especially to the right, it tends to saturate the image at the same time. So we need to counter that by desaturating. So let's go ahead and desaturate 
down quite a bit. Maybe something like that. And maybe I'm going to just bring this down a bit. Like I said, it doesn't have to be exactly on the line, but having it near the line really helps. Okay, so here we are with our before, and here we are with our after. And I think that this skin tone definitely looks a lot more natural. This is a bit too saturated, a bit too yellow, but by using our vector scope to help assess our skin tones, we could bring our skin tones into a bit more natural looking color. And now we can start our retouching and color grading process. Let's do another example. Okay, here's another example of someone with darker skin. And this looks fine. There's nothing really wrong with this image. But if we look at the vector scope, we can see it's pretty easy to read because there's only two colors present in this image, the blue of his shirt in the background and then his skin tone. And again, also here, his skin tone is pushed a little bit more toward yellow. So I'm going to go ahead and just grab another HSL adjustment layer here and we'll just go ahead and pick his skin. Now, I'm not too worried about the selection because there's really no other colors that are nearby present in this image. So that way I know that I'm only really affecting his skin here and using that hue shift slider i'm going to just push it a little bit more toward that skin tone maybe something about like that and again i'm gonna have to desaturate because it tends to saturate the colors when you hue shift to the right and maybe something like that i think that looks pretty good and this is our before and this is our after now again this is a preference it's not a science it is an art so you know you might like a little bit of that yellow in the skin and maybe I want to desaturate actually a little bit more, something like that. There, I think that looks a little bit more natural. You know, this yellow in the highlights could have been just caused by, you know, there may have been a color tint in the soft box I was using. Uh, maybe the white balance was slight, slightly incorrect, not sure. But I think by doing this little simple adjustment, we've really kind of corrected the skin tone. Let's go ahead and do one more example. And here's another portrait. Now here I can see her skin is definitely a bit too red for my liking. I can try to confirm that by just cropping into, let's say, her forehead. Somewhere like that. And I can see, yeah, this skin is kind of this, this cloud of skin is a bit too much toward the red. I want to reel it in a little bit, get it close to that eye line. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's undo and let's do a HSL adjustment layer. And same thing, I want to pick an area of her skin, but I know because there's so many other similar colors in this image, I'm going to have to really try to reel in this selection as close as I can get it. So that I'm just affecting the skin, especially here in the reds and her lipstick. Let's see how much of that lipstick we can bring back in before affecting the skin. Okay, that looks good. There's a little bit of color coming in in her collarbone so I'm going to back it off like that all right we'll start something like that okay cool and because we kind of knew that her skin was kind of falling around here now we are going to hue shift to the left and I'm just kind of guessing roughly where that I kind of remember that skin was that that patch right here so I'm just gonna bring it down a little bit and then the here that saturation doesn't seem to be affected too much when you hue shift to the left, but we can change saturation according to taste and maybe something like that. So here's our before and here's our after. Now we can obviously see it had some effect in the background. So if we really wanted to, we could, you know, come in here. Uh, let's invert this layer and then using a white paintbrush. I can just paint that adjustment back in so that it's only on her skin and that way it's not having any effect on the background or her lips or her shirt or especially her hair because they were kind of a similar color. And then that way it might be easier for me to assess the before and after. And then again, I can make adjustments to taste. Let me just do this really quick. All right, that's good enough. Okay, so there we can see our before and our after. And then, you know, I think it needs to be actually, the saturation needs to be the same and maybe it's a bit too yellow. So let's go ahead and bring it back a little bit. Maybe something like that looks a bit more natural to me. A bit too red, 
looks pretty good. So this is a great tool for you to basically reel in your skin tone, especially those times when you feel like the skin's just not looking right or something looks off about it. Using the vector scope can give you kind of an unbiased look at your skin tone because it's not always good to go by eye because if your monitor's not properly calibrated, so I'm working on a properly calibrated monitor, so I know that what I'm seeing is pretty accurate, but if you're working on a laptop which can't be calibrated or a different kind of display, you may not actually be seeing the colors correctly. So what you think looks good on your skin tones might not be correct. And when you put it out there and other people see it on their phones or their screens, it's gonna look a bit off. So the vector scope gives you an unbiased assessment of the colors that are present in your image. And using that information, you can make adjustments and make sure your colors are good and accurate for awesome photos. Okay, guys, uh, thank you very much for watching. I appreciate all your comments, and I hope this is helpful. And I have another video coming out hopefully soon, basically on the uh, Affinity Photo white balance tool because it doesn't work very well. So I want to show you how you can make it work perfectly. Uh, okay, so anyways, that's all for today, guys. I appreciate you guys for sticking it out to the end, and I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.